Now, welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Some Star Wars, where this time we'll be taking a look at the results of the poll that asked you, how do you feel about Yoda using a lightsaber in the prequels and Clone Wars? I'll then be reading and responding to some of your comments, as well as showing off some of the artwork that was sent in to me. And since I'm still way behind on emails, if you sent me something and you don't see it here, I will get to it soon enough and include it in a future video. Anyway, let's now get to the results, where we'll see that 56% of people absolutely love Yoda using a lightsaber and or think it makes complete sense. 29% said they liked it and had no real problem with it. 9% were neutral and didn't really have a strong opinion. 5% didn't like it or just preferred he hadn't used one. And 2% hated and thought it was ridiculous. And I am a little surprised by these results. I thought there might be some more opposition to it or more people maybe neutral towards it. And there were a lot of comments made by people who seemed surprised this was even a thing, that didn't know anyone might have an issue with this, and these results suggest it really isn't so much of one. Or if it once was, like shortly after Attack of the Clones came out, it's become less of one over the years. In fact, there were some comments that said something similar to that, that over the years they've come to either accept it or even enjoy it, where it just doesn't bug them anymore. And so let's now dive further into this topic by getting to some of your comments, and as always, a big thank you to everyone who votes, and especially to those of you who take the time to leave a comment. I very much appreciate it. And we'll kick this off, as we always do, with the top-rated comment, which this time came to us from I'm the Reverse, who said, Your father's lightsaber. It's the weapon of a Jedi Knight. From the very first movie, Obi-Wan establishes that Jedi used lightsabers. For 800 years have I trained Jedi. Yoda trained Jedi. Jedi used lightsabers. Even in the OT, it was logical to think that Yoda used a lightsaber. How can you train a Jedi to use a lightsaber without knowing how to wield one yourself? And you're right, that is an extremely sound, logical argument that is nearly impossible to counter, and that I don't think anyone would try to counter. And I saw a lot of comments basically saying or asking, why is anyone mad that he knows how to use a lightsaber? And I don't think anyone is mad that he knows how to use one, or that he still owns one. The issue some have is him still using it after 800 years of learning the ways of the Force and teaching it to others, that they feel he's moved beyond that form of combat. Which kind of brings us to this comment from J.K. Bookman, who said, I've always found it weird that people had a problem with him wielding a saber just because by the time we meet him, he seems like he's moved beyond physical combat. He's literally described as a great warrior in Empire. Did they think that means he was really wise? That means he was great at war. In fact, I think it even makes his character development that much stronger between the prequels and the OT. He realized that the Jedi had in fact become over-obsessed with combat prowess and war, and so once the Jedi fall, he abandons the more physically domination aspects of the Force and focused on honing his spirituality and philosophy. He begins to truly realize that the Force is the strongest weapon and ally in the galaxy, which is what they lost sight of by trying to win the war with ships and armies instead of fighting against the dark side by bringing balance using the light side of the Force. Okay, so I very much agree with the latter half of what you said here, that him using a lightsaber in the prequels sort of highlights the fact that even Yoda, arguably the greatest and wisest Jedi ever, was putting too much emphasis or faith on physical domination, on combat prowess, and so on, that he forgot his greatest ally was, well, the Force, which contrasts really well with the way he was in The Empire Strikes Back. However, and I saw a lot of people bringing this up in the comments, and they're likely going to disagree with me here, which is absolutely fine, but originally, at least, The Empire Strikes Back does not establish Yoda as a great warrior. If anything, it does the exact opposite. That line where Luke says he's looking for a great warrior says everything about Luke's expectations of Yoda, and little, if anything, about the reality of Yoda. At this point in the story, Luke assumes Jedi Knight equals Great Warrior, which is why he doesn't even begin to suspect that this little green creature he's encountered could possibly be Yoda, and why later on he's so stunned to learn he is Yoda. That whole opening encounter with Yoda basically establishes how much Luke has to learn, and how underestimating someone based on the way they look or their size can be very costly because size and looks matter not when it comes to the Force. And sure, in hindsight or now after the prequels, I completely understand why people see that scene differently or why they think it alludes to prequel Yoda and the fact that he was a truly great warrior. And we can construe that scene to mean that perhaps after Obi-Wan sent Luke to Dagobah to find Yoda, 
He looked him up somehow, or asked others about him, and learned Yoda was the Grand Master of the Jedi Order, and led them during the Clone Wars, and just came to the conclusion he's probably a great warrior. And though the end result here is essentially the same either way, it's Luke learning a lesson about being dismissive of someone based on their looks, that the Force is meant to be used for knowledge and defense, never attack. Again, originally the idea behind that line of calling Yoda a great warrior was Luke needed to have his perception of what a Jedi is changed. He thought it was all about combat and fighting, and he was of course very wrong. Alright, and moving on now we have this comment from Mailman123 who said, when Yoda reveals his lightsaber in Attack of the Clones, it's one of the most exciting scenes in all of Star Wars. Him not having a lightsaber in The Empire Strikes Back means that he doesn't want to fight anymore. Yoda could have killed Vader, but he didn't want to. He learned from his time in The Clone Wars that fighting wasn't the best way. Him using a lightsaber in the prequels only adds to his character in The Empire Strikes Back. It doesn't take anything away. We also had this comment from Kerbel2006 who said, Into exile I must go, failed I have. I think this quote sums it up. When he was the proud leader of the Jedi, he wielded a lightsaber. When he became a hermit, he felt unworthy of using the Jedi weapon and abandoned it. I don't know, that's just my interpretation. And I do agree that that line about failing and going into exile pretty much sums up Yoda's arc in the prequels. That it's him fully realizing he's made some mistakes, maybe lost his way, and now has to go into exile to figure out exactly where he went wrong and how they can still eventually win this, how they can eventually defeat the dark side. And he realizes that straight up dueling Palpatine is not the answer, which is why I think he never again, as far as we know, will pick up a lightsaber. Not so much because he's unworthy, but he realizes the futility of fighting against Palpatine with one. Okay, next up here we have this comment from David Tryon who said, when I first saw Yoda jumping around using a lightsaber, I always thought it was a bit corny and over the top, same for Palpatine later on as well. As a fan that grew up with the just the OT in the late 80s and 90s, I always had the impression that both Yoda and Palpatine did not need lightsabers because their command of the light or dark side of the force gave them more power than any weapon, even a lightsaber. All that being said, the more I watched the prequels and Clone Wars, the more I have come to accept Yoda and Palpatine using lightsabers, and I have no problems with the idea today. Also here we had this comment from Nicholas Pogson who said, I always liked to imagine that Yoda was so powerful he didn't need to use a lightsaber. He's so in tune with the Force that a lightsaber is unnecessary, like Palpatine. And I'll be honest here, before the prequels, I never really thought about Yoda using a lightsaber one way or the other. It just never crossed my mind because subconsciously, I think I believed he was beyond it. And I think during The Empire Strikes Back, at that point in the timeline, I mean, he is beyond using a lightsaber. And the best way to rectify any type of argument or debate here is to say what many people have been saying. That it's only after the mistakes of the prequels that Yoda truly becomes the wise Jedi Master we thought him to be. And that's not to say he was an idiot before that, or anything like it, but after everything with the Clone Wars, his training with Qui-Gon to become a Force Ghost, it's during those years on Dagobah when he truly becomes something more, when he reaches true enlightenment. As for Palpatine not using one, it could be something very similar, only in reverse, where he's become so arrogant, and so sure of himself, and his strength with the dark side, that he doesn't feel like he needs one anymore, which is why he almost mocks Luke and Vader as well for having one, that it's something beneath him now. Okay, and next up here we have this comment from Osirin Fair who said, I used to love it, but I've migrated into the camp of thinking it was a mistake. The way Yoda constantly goes for his lightsaber in the prequels and Clone Wars runs a little too hard against who he is in Empire, lessons learned or otherwise. I think far better would have been to show him beating Dooku with the Force alone in Attack of the Clones, to show that his mastery after nearly nine centuries is so great, he can't be bested in simple engagement. Then when it comes time to confront Palpatine at the end, he finally reveals that he does indeed carry a lightsaber. He has to show that he needs to use every skill he has learned to try and beat Palpatine, and then ultimately fails. I think this would play better into the arrogance he displays in the prequels as well. It would help drive the idea home. And I like where you're going with this, that Palpatine and Yoda were equals in the Force, one dark, one light obviously which led to them having to almost resort to using lightsabers to decide their contest. And yeah, I know that's what happened between Yoda and Dooku, but I do think it makes more sense for Yoda to beat Dooku in, shall we say, a contest of force powers, 
causing Dooku to flee before the lightsabers ever came out. And then to have another contest of the Force with Palpatine, but again, they're equals and the lightsabers have to come out and be sort of the tiebreaker. And then maybe you end it not by Yoda losing his lightsaber, but you have it where clone troopers again kind of show up and chase Yoda off, that he can't take on both them and Palpatine. And after he flees, he decides to throw away the lightsaber, similar to how Luke threw his away in Return of the Jedi, almost in a way foreshadowing how Palpatine and the Sith would ultimately be defeated. And that's the moment Yoda truly begins to reflect on all of his mistakes, and again becomes the Yoda we'll see in The Empire Strikes Back. Alright, and moving on now, we have this comment from Blind101284 who said, I voted neutral. In hindsight, I'd make two changes. One, I would remove Yoda's cane throughout the entire prequels until after he fails at the conclusion of his battle with Sidious, so that he didn't need his cane because of his age, but because of the fight. Two, I would cut back on the flips just a little. In fact, my least favorite part of some of the prequel duels is the fake flips. Darth Maul was amazing because Ray Park literally performed all those stunts, but the CGI flips feels silly at times. The problem people have with Yoda using a saber comes from that line in Empire before Luke enters the cave, but obviously Yoda had to have been instructed with how to use one. It's a Jedi's weapon. It's just the crouching tiger hidden dragon acrobatics from an old limping Yoda that doesn't mesh well as everyone was expecting more force powers. All in all, he doesn't use it unless absolutely necessary, and it does make sense that he would use one. I think they just escaped plausibility for a little bit, and yes, it's a science fiction swashbuckler about interstellar warfare, but everything before Attack of the Clones was done practically, so it was still plausible and not impossible to buy. Well said all around, and you've got another very interesting idea here, that until the final fight with Sidious, Yoda doesn't maybe need the cane, that somehow the fight with him takes so much out of him that he needs it afterwards. You could have also had it, though it would require some major changes to the story, where the fight with Yoda is what changes Sidious's appearance as well, or what deforms him, that he draws so heavily on the dark side he becomes disfigured, and at the same time it could be seen as his mask sort of falling off, the Phantom Menace being fully unveiled. Not that I don't like the way it was done against Windu and all of that, just putting some thoughts out there on other ways it could have been done. Alright, let's now get to just a few more comments here, starting with this one from Mac Davidson Studios, who said, Love it. Totally drives the theme of Size Matters Not. That and it looks cool. Then this comment from Freshwater Mostly, who said, I remember when I would use Yoda in LEGO Star Wars the game. He would walk so slow with the cane, then I pulled out the lightsaber, he would start flying through the enemies. Yoda in the prequels was so awesome to see. Then we have this one from Danthrax24 who said, Initially upon first seeing Attack of the Clones, I really enjoyed Yoda's lightsaber duel with Dooku. Over time, I have come to realize that Yoda never even using a lightsaber would have made him even more interesting, mysterious, and legendary from a character power level perspective. So yes, while it does look cool to see Yoda wield a lightsaber, I ultimately wish they had never given him one. And finally here we have this comment from CR12 who said, I'm too young to remember a time when Yoda didn't use a lightsaber, so I never questioned it. And I do think quite obviously that's part of it here. If you grew up with the prequels, it probably doesn't seem odd to you in the least that he used a lightsaber. If you grew up with the original trilogy, you may have gotten the impression years before the prequels ever came out that he was beyond the use of lightsabers somehow. And I think these results tend to say that either this was never such a big deal in the first place, which is possible, or over time, over the years, more and more people have come to like or accept it, have come to see it as part of Yoda's story, that the prequels are why he became the way he was in the original trilogy. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Does it bug you that Yoda uses a lightsaber in the prequels, or not? Or feel free to tell me what you think of what I or anyone else had to say here in this video. Either way, do leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.